Hi, my name is Alex Kennedinik of Problemio.com and in this video I'm going to give you 40 effective online business ideas that work today and tomorrow and I'm going to sprinkle in some business idea and planning fundamentals so that you can have a solid foundation and know where to start and know how to choose the right business idea for you. And the way I'm going to explain things is most of the ideas here are going to be passive and because there are so many ideas it's just going to be an overview of them I'm, I'm not going to be able to go in depth of them but if you see that some are interesting for you then this video will give you an idea of what to look into next and here I'll give you an overview of the types of ideas I'm going to show you and then we'll dive right into it so of course e-commerce is thriving today tomorrow Amazon Etsy Shopify we'll talk about it later Education and e-learning is thriving right now. These are industries that are booming that you should look into. And these are, again, just high level because I'm going to go fast. And then a little later in the video, I'm, I am going to get deeper into it. But I just want to give you a sense of what we're going to be talking about. There's also this personal branding, right? Like I have a personal branded business. You build up authority. You can sell more. And you can use that to promote any other business you have so there's a lot of personal branding on YouTube on Instagram there's a lot of that going on right now it's really popular and it's been democratized because the web has opened up opportunity of course there's always room with new technology for new startups innovative ideas we'll talk about that and services freelancing agency type businesses for example SEO marketing as a service web design as a service website building, programming, writing, copywriting. There's a million services that are very common today and the barrier to entry is low and you get paid quickly. And if you are not afraid of doing the work, these are fantastic uh, businesses for you and you, you, you don't have to get paid by the hour because uh, obviously once your business becomes big, you can just hire out and not actually have to do a lot of the work although there is a lot of hustle up front anyway these are the industries that are booming, booming today tomorrow there will be industries like virtual reality augmented reality artificial intelligence we'll actually talk about that in this video as well but this stuff is the stuff that's like really hot today good stuff to get into so let's get started so first I'm going to give you the ideas that have to do with e-commerce and selling products and affiliate marketing. A lot of people come to me and ask me about affiliate marketing. Most people that I talk to and I talk to a lot of people, I've coached over a thousand people over time in a one-on-one -on -one situation and a lot of people ask about affiliate marketing. There seems to be the situation where people think it's easy. Some affiliate marketing teachers teach the same almost like snake oil salesman type thing where they say oh it's easy you just get affiliate products to resell get your link promote it and you're done and maybe you'll run them some ads to get traffic and it's really not that easy the hardest part of affiliate, of affiliate marketing is to get the traffic that actually buys selling is hard selling on your own is harder and that's why we need like Amazon's and Etsy's and all those stores they help us so affiliate marketing is basically where you don't have your own products so you can sell other people's products for a commission which sounds amazing and it is amazing because you don't have to manage inventory you don't have to do the tech support you don't have to uh, build the products there's a lot of things you don't have to do and you can start this literally on day one but you have to still execute at a high level because you still need to get the traffic, still need to do the sales part very well. The sales part is not easy there. And that typically is the pitfall. And if you don't want to sell affiliate products, selling your own products is a little bit more lucrative because affiliate products, you typically get some commission. When you sell your own products, you typically get a bigger cut. And there's a lot of ways to source, meaning get products. Commonly, it's from China. There are two main websites people use. They're owned by the same company, Alibaba and AliExpress. If you're not aware, I'll teach you the differences. Alibaba is where you can buy a bulk amount of products and just ship it. Like let's say you invest in 500 units of some item. They ship it to you and then you sell one by one by one. It's a problem because you have to invest a lot of money up front. Challenge. So the solution to that is this thing called AliExpress where you can get the items drop shipped to like let's say somebody buys one item it gets shipped to that person who buys the one item so you and you can buy at a smaller scale you can buy one item at a time 
So that solves the problem of having this having to invest up front. So AliExpress helps to solve that problem. And of course, once you get products, you can make products on your own. You can something simple, maybe some homemade products, products you source from China, products maybe some people even buy things at Walmart and sell it on Amazon for double or triple the price. So however you get your product, meaning however you source the product, source is the official term, uh, selling on Amazon is a fantastic option because Amazon is the biggest store in the world today and it's easy to get into it, not like Walmart where it's impossible to get into or nearly impossible for most people. And they solve the traffic problem for you, right? They have millions of shoppers. And that's the problem with affiliate marketing. You have to sell through your own marketing channels, which for a new marketer is not easy. And that's what Amazon solves for you. So selling your own products through Amazon is fantastic. And you can create products. A lot of people have talent. If you don't have talent, I'll give you an idea. Even if you don't have talent, YouTube tutorials for, like look at YouTube and watch tutorials for how to make stuff. How do you make something from as simple as little origami like little thing and sell them on Amazon. Yeah, you're not going to become a millionaire, but that'll be your first marginally successful business and you'll learn, oh, it's so easy. I can learn how to make stuff online, make the stuff and sell it. So you don't have to know how to make things now. You can learn and do it quickly. And I'll talk about more advanced ways to manufacture right at home later in the video. And of course, there is the idea of creating digital products. Amazing because you don't have to manage inventory. And once you made one copy of a digital product, you've made a million, right? All you have to do is copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. So when you make that, that example of the origami airplane, right? The paper airplane, as maybe we'll use that as the example of the simplest physical product. Well, you have to make one every time, every time, every time. Digital product. Just have to make it once. And so digital products are extremely popular to sell because one, there's no manufacturing cost essentially. So to reproduce the next and the next and next. So essentially what happens is you, every second and third sale is a pure profit. So you keep more, right? Because you have no materials costs, you have no shipping costs. Shipping, the costs are less. You keep more of the revenue and you don't have to manage inventory. You don't have to ship. There's a lot of things you don't have to do. It's fantastic. And a lot of people who maybe aren't crafty, like myself, I've got two left hands. I can make digital products. I can write a book. I can create a course. We'll talk about that. So let's talk about creating products on your own. We have a smooth segue here. So I'll teach you how to make a lot of types of products with least amount of work. And... There's three types of media content you can make online. Written, audio, and video. And you'll notice that sometimes, well, you know, like uh, audio can get extracted from a video. So there's all these kinds of nuances. So you don't have to, you, you, you can do a minimum amount of work, but get the maximum amount of content. So first of all, you can create a book online. Uh, Self-publishing is booming. So you can sell on Amazon, you can sell on Apple Books, whatever. But how do you create a book? Well, a book is can be something as simple as a series of strategically planned out blog posts that you give somebody to edit and kind of put into a book. So you have to hire an editor and maybe you have to hire a copywriter. But essentially, you just have, but you bring the ideas and these ideas are essentially your blog posts. And if you write them in a way that's kind of like when you create the book outline, every chapter, every sub chapter is a blog post. And at the end of maybe 30 or 50 blog posts, you've got yourself enough content for a book, good book. All you need to do is just hire an editor. So you've got yourself a book. That's your easiest product product to make in a sense almost. And then what you can also do is create videos, videos, you can make YouTube videos. You can make eventually a course, an online course out of the video. So that's also an option. And of course, the books you can sell on Amazon. I already mentioned that. And the courses you can sell on a site like Udemy or even Skillshare.com. So it's Udemy.com or Skillshare.com. They are the Amazons for courses. And Udemy is the leader. Skillshare is the number two. And of course, what does that do? 
it helps you create a personal brand. All of a sudden, you're an author. You're a YouTube personality if you create uh, videos. You may be a podcaster. So let me just take a second and explain briefly how all of this would work. Let's say you make videos. Well, what happens with the video? It has in it audio. And if you transcribe the video, you can hire a freelancer to do that. That transcription can be your blog post. And that blog post can be one of the series of blog posts which end up making up your book. So, if, and videos are really easy to make. I mean, good videos are hard to make, but you can start in an easy way and improve later. So, right away, you get three types of content when you make a video. So, a freelancer can help you extract the audio, turn it into a podcast, extract the text, turn it into your blog post. So, all of a sudden, just making a video, you're on your podcasting, you're YouTubing, you're creating maybe the foundation for your online course and you're creating blog posts which are the foundation of your book. So you see how you're actually creating a little bit of a it's, a, it's the start of a little personally branded empire because you're on all the major platforms, YouTube, podcast, you know, website with your own blog, but also you've got products that you're starting to make. Your book and your course are beginning to get made. So that's very powerful. So let's talk about more creating digital products. Obviously, books are popular. You can sell books. Video courses, very, very popular today. Video courses offer something that books do not, which is ease of ease of consumption. You, you might read, a, a consumer might read a book in a week or two. If they take the same course in video, it, they'll complete it in a day. It's way faster. And video courses give you a digital product, very important, digital product that is mid-price digital product because books are low-price digital product. So it's a way to get more money from the same customer. And we'll talk about how to get people to spend more money later in the video. And of course, YouTubing is great. Of course, to make real money, you have to go big on YouTube. But YouTube is a fantastic start for all video creators because the barrier to entry is non-existent and you can start quickly and get your feedback quickly and start making at, le at least a little bit of money in the beginning and then work your way up from there. So like I mentioned, YouTube audio becomes a podcast. A podcast can, uh, again, if you go big, you can get sponsors. From a podcast, you can promote your book, your course, get people to come to your website. It's going to be a fantastic marketing channel to get people to discover you. And of course, the YouTube transcription is a blog. This is just a little recap of stuff I uh, mentioned before. So just to give you a few fundamentals, and I do have, just like I mentioned, the online courses, I do have a few online courses of my own, and I especially recommend my course on starting a business and my course on business planning, because those will give you the very solid foundations on, on which to get started. It will help you understand what business is the right one for you, how to go about it, how to think through the planning of it so that you don't meet some really big problems later on because the more problems you can find in the in the planning phases it makes the execution that much easier and it makes it cheaper too and it gets you to succeed, succeed faster because you don't have to solve big problems because you saw it earlier during the planning phases when it was cheap to fix just ideas throwing around and then you planned around that problem instead of walk right into it. So there's a few fundamentals that are crucial and they're in my courses and I'm going to link to my Udemy courses in the description. But really, if you go to udemy.com slash user slash Alex Lindinic, which is my brutal name, but if you just search for me on uh, Udemy, all my courses are, they have a discount coupon, the word 10 and the word 10, 10, 10 makes any course ten dollars so it's smart it's, it's negligibly priced it's extremely cheap and they there's like hours and hours and hours of content to and and they'll ramp up your learning and your it will make you a stronger entrepreneur and it will teach you also how to promote things so it will help a lot with that so and every business essentially needs a solid foundation because if you have a weak foundation if there's no real cohesive strategy just some hope and a prayer, you know, it, it just, you're not setting yourself up for success. And of course, I'm sure you'd rather sell yourself 
up for success. So it, it's it's necessary. And first time entrepreneurs, they make that mistake where it's all so confusing. So they just might as well plow into things. And with these courses and with a little bit of education, you really ensure that you do find as many problems as possible and solve them early and get around them later. So some fundamentals, uh, you, you do need a solid foundation. The first part of that foundation is you'll hear a lot of people say, you should pursue your passion. And it's a little bit of a trite thing to say, like, yeah, but uh, great, you know, great advice, right? Pursue your passion. But it's, in a sense, you should not get into things that you have no idea about. If you've been a construction worker your whole life, you don't want to get into complex online businesses because there are sharks who know that business so well. So even though you're totally able to succeed, the first six to nine months will be an, just a learning experience for you, right? You'll be like making mistakes on the top of a mistake on top of a mistake. So you need to match up your ideas, not just with your passion, but with your experience and your knowledge and sometimes even if you really want to learn about something and you don't mind the learning curve that you're about to hit, then that's fine. But you should know that if you're getting into a business that you don't know, there's going to be a learning curve, which means you have to be more patient. It's going to cost you probably a little more money. You're going to make a few more mistakes. So it's really important. If you don't want to spend more money, if you don't want to uh, take more time, if you want to succeed faster, you probably should take advantage of industries you know, your education, your passion, all that stuff. You'll just be getting into things that where, where you can succeed faster. Also, in my courses, I teach a lot about how to know if an idea is good, how to evaluate a market, how to get a almost like a sense of smell for an industry. Where is it going? Because you, you have to develop that sixth sense of, okay, fine, like people, everybody says everything online. It's hard to listen to them. At some point, you have to make the decision on your own. And how do you know if you have a lot of good ideas? Like I'll give you 40 ideas in this video. How do you know which one is the right one for you? And so the other thing I teach in the courses is essentially how do you choose from multiple good ideas? And of course, in the courses, there's also a lot of exercise and in-depth tutorials to make it practical for you. So you can actually get started, not just be all in theory all the time. They actually will help you get started and be kind of like your A to Z side by side with me giving you guidance and instructions and there's plenty of material so that you literally go from no business idea to figuring out how to get good business ideas to planning them to raising money for them to then starting them and to promoting them and i'll link up to all my courses in the video description so that you can get a sense for what you're going to get you can browse the courses you don't have to buy it when you click on the links you can browse the list of videos in the curriculum to see like hey is this going to really be helpful what's in it because you can actually kind of see what's in it and you can watch some of the preview videos and see hey like is this is this guy full am i full of hot air or not so you can actually watch some of the videos for yourself on each course there's at least 10 minutes of free preview videos so you can get a sense of like do you like it am i going to annoy you in the courses can you bear watching a course with me for hours is it helpful so I'll link it again. It's all on udemy.com slash user slash Alex Kinnadinik are all my courses. Because my name is so brutal, I'll link up, I'll link it up in the in the description. I'll have all the links for you so you can just browse there. And um, one other thing that I'm really interested in is there are these business fundamentals that everybody talks about, like choosing the right business idea, getting into your passionate field. Okay, great, great, great. But I love deeper fundamentals that have to do with you. You are the entrepreneur, you're in your brain all the time, 24 seven, and there's this idea of EQ, emotional quotient, emotional intelligence. And there's, you know, you might have, might have heard of IQ, intelligence quotient. This is EQ, your emotional quotient. Studies show that EQ is, uh, IQ, your brain function, is largely genetic, like it's inherited, like, but EQ is very learnable. So whereas in, in IQ, a lot of individuals can only go to a certain level of up and down, EQ, you can raise your emotional quotient 
tremendously if you just pay attention to what it is. And it has to, and so that's good news for us because anyone can quickly make themselves more emotionally intelligent. And when you're more, more emotionally intelligent, the idea behind that is that you're able to channel your emotions more productively. And your emotions, again, they're with you all the time. You can't get rid of them. So let's give an example of one of them. For example, it, it, it explains a lot of business failure. Why do so many entrepreneurs fail? It's a known fact that they fail, but why? And the, I'll explain to you at least one very common pattern. There's many patterns, but this is a very common situation that I see all the time. So an entrepreneur gets a business idea. I'm going to get into self-driving cars. Fantastic. Okay, it's very exciting. Excitement, we have to, emotional intelligence is, we have to understand what our emotions are going to do to us. So what is excitement? What is that emotion going to do to us? It has a, every emotion has a negative and a positive. So it, the, the great thing about excitement is that it gives you this short term, not long term, short term motivation. Great. Day one, day two, you're going to be in self-driving cars. But excitement is misleading. That's the bad part about it. You become very subjective. Your ideas seem better than they are. You seem to, you don't pay attention to, like, what are, what, are, what are the pitfalls that might happen, right? And so you're kind of a little bit, it's also blinding. So it's excitement, great for motivation, blinding. So the work is not exciting. The day-to-day -day work is boring. And the short-term motivation fades fast. And if you don't have a long-term motivator, then it leads to, okay, it's boring work, it's very frustrated, very complicated. And it leads to just pure quitting. Just don't want to keep working on it. It's boring. It's not what you thought it was going to be. And that simple cycle happens all the time to smart people every day. But if you know it, you can catch it, right? Once you're aware, you'll catch yourself. I'm really excited. Let's wait until the excitement fades before I plow into it. When, you, when the excitement fades, you'll be able to be more objective. And so you'll be able to evaluate your idea and really ask yourself, hey, can I really get into it? Is this for me? Right? And so you'll be able to give yourself the right answers that are more correct, that are not going to mislead you. And maybe you'll realize, okay, I am getting into self-driving cars. It is right for me. Or maybe you'll realize, oh my God, this is a complicated field. And I really don't know much about it. I should not, this is not for me. At least I should do more, more research. That probably would be reasonable for someone who doesn't know about self-driving cars. So let's talk just a little bit more about yourself, right? We talked about emotional intelligence. Now, does your idea matter or is it you, right? Like if I told you 20 years ago, go make Google, could you do it, right? Sometimes it's the right idea fit for a person. And sometimes it's the entrepreneur. So Google might be too complicated for most people. But let's say, I say, just create a blog. Let's say a blog. I'm not saying you should create a blog, just for example. Well, a blog is like almost anyone can do it. Some people write better, some people write worse. If you don't want to do a blog, you have the option to create a YouTube channel. Well, some YouTubers, they get 10 videos on their views. Some YouTubers get 10 million videos on their views. What's the difference? And the difference is the effort and the quality of your effort. And that is go that goes under the umbrella of personal productivity. And the quality and the um, amount and the quality of the work that you output. And also, I'll link, up, I'll link up to my course where I combine 20 productivity skills into one course. And they, they, each one can help you tremendously. For example, let's say you have a hard time focusing. Well, your productivity goes way down if you're doing smart intellectual work where focus is necessary. If you're getting distracted a lot, just, just the, not only the, the sheer output volume, but the quality is going to go down. Same with time management. If you discipline yourself and you schedule, you'll just do more of the things and things that are not necessary for you to do, like nice to have but not necessary, you'll be, if you're better able to get rid of those and replace them with the things that are absolutely necessary, 
You'll just accomplish the right things, you'll work on the right things, and with better focus, you'll produce better results, and that can have a tremendous impact on everything else you do, right? Because once you start getting results, better quality, right? A better quality video on YouTube, if we, if we use that example, well, one video, bad quality gets a few views, video with quality gets more views. So the better the quality, the better the success. It's very correlated. Also, long, discipline, huge. Sometimes we don't want to discipline ourselves that much. We want to form healthy habits, right? Discipline is when you force yourself, but there's only so much forcing of yourself that you can do in a day. So healthy habits, when you do the, 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 the things that you wanted to do when you're disciplined, if you do them naturally, it's easy. Don't have to think about it. Don't have to force yourself. And so discipline is also kind of in the productivity category. And of course, long-term intrinsic motivation. When something comes from you, when you wake up every day and you're like passionate about something, you're thinking about something all the time, that's intrinsic long-term motivation. That's the thing that keeps you working, not the short-term motivation, which is just good to get you to start. And so tapping into that long-term goals, long-term intrinsic motivation is a huge part of getting yourself to focus, getting yourself to manage your time, getting yourself to discipline, right? It gives you that consistent uh, push. And so, of course, all these things combined, imagine if you are hitting 100% on all of those, right? So, of course, your effort is going to be way better and the results follow. And, of course, to give yourself a better effort, you need coaching and education. You're doing that at the moment. Fantastic. That's the right thing to do. Learning. You should always be learning. I'm always learning. I've probably taken over 100 courses. I teach courses as a teacher, but I've probably taken over 100 courses as a student. Anything from psychology to emotional intelligence to productivity to philosophy to even like uh, sleep, how to sleep better, which I'm not really able to do still that well. But anyway, so... I keep learning and you should also keep learning and I listen to podcasts, I take courses, I watch YouTube, I read books, I learn all the time and I hire coaches for myself, for anything. Whenever I'm getting into something new, now I hire a coach and a lot of them are expensive but a lot of them are reasonably priced as well so you can find a good coach for a reasonable price too. So uh, make sure you do that. Coaches help you not succeed overnight but succeed instead of five years in one year. But that's priceless. So a good coach is really priceless. And same with education. Also, one part that I wanted to mention is uh, mindfulness, understanding yourself and really being mindful of what makes you happy, what really motivates you long-term, that, that inner self-awareness, that's going to set you on the right track because if you're not mindful enough, other people will tell you what to do with your life. And you have to take the leadership role of that. And there's also, of course, part of this is, uh, you know, just on the point of mindfulness, you know, there's uh, Tony Robbins has this amazing quote that I picked up that I love is that leadership is a, uh, you have to be a leader of yourself first, right? So, and with mindfulness, you'll know what direction to take yourself. So all of this is related and all of this has to do with your business. Because if you pick a bad business, you're just not going to care about it that much. Your enthusiasm is going to win and, and it's just not going to work, right? So all of this is kind of, it's not like I'm giving you ideas. I'll give you the ideas. We'll get, we'll get to them. But it, it's really the fundamentals that will really play the day-to-day -day role in helping you succeed. These are the underlying factors most first-time entrepreneurs simply just don't even think about. But experienced entrepreneurs, oh, they're all over this thing. I'm passionate about these things because I know that these things are really key to my own success and things that I do. So that's why I really wanted to talk about them. So, and of course, last point on this, be consistent and persistent. Business is a marathon. It's rarely, sometimes, overnight success. But most of the time, it's a marathon inside of which there's a ton of sprints. But it's a marathon. It's a long-term thing. And people who are consistent and persistent, they succeed. That don't have to be the smartest people, although it helps. But you have to be the most consistent and stick to it. So the stick to itness, huge key. Even when people quiz what makes a genius, people research what makes genius, Albert Einstein, people like this, they always, not always, often, very often, 
note that it was just persistent. I, like they say, I wasn't the smartest, I was the most persistent. And that's what you have to do as well. So let's just go back to business ideas we covered, products. Now let's go into services. Services are easier a little bit because you can just do. So there's a couple of websites, Fiverr.com and Upwork.com. They're today the most popular freelancing websites. And there's a lot of services you can offer on them. For example, any kind of marketing services. Let's say you want to do social media promotion, Instagram. You want to do search, search engine optimization for people. You can get... You can sign up on these sites as a service provider and get hired sometimes even the same day, although that's not for everyone. But you can quickly get hired as a freelancer and start making money today. And if you have design skills, you can provide design services. If you have writing skills, you can provide editing services or copywriting services or ghostwriting services. There's a lot of services you can provide. Um, and with services, the trick is that often people will want to hire you cheaply. And actually, that's not bad because there's a traditional business wisdom is that it's easier to sell to an existing customer than to find a new one. So you might have an entry point where people can try your services cheaply. But if they love your services... You can extend the lifetime value of that customer. You commonly use this LTV. And if you can sell them more, you'll make more money from them. So let's talk about how to actually make more money from the same clients. This is fun. This is really fun because literally you have to don't have to work harder to get new clients. You just have to monetize the, the previous ones, the ones that you already got better. And there's a couple of strategies. First of all, you will not sell more unless they become really f like fans of your product. They love your product or service. They get a good experience. If you give a bad experience, bad product, shoddy product, they're not going to love you. They'll be okay. Probably not going to come back. So that's bad. So you have to make them love you. If they love you, you can make them buy again and again and again and again and again. The easiest mechanism for that is to offer a subscription-like service. So, of course, you'd love for people to buy something once, but what if you offer a, something like a subscription? Regular content, premium content, there's a lot of types of subscriptions. I'm not going to go into all of them, but they're common. It, it's a common thing. For your situation, what you have to do is see what's a long-term thing I can provide and can I package that up as a subscription? If you cannot do a subscription, you can create what's called a consumable. It works and functions as a, as a subscription, but it's not a subscription because people consume it. Food is a fantastic example. If you're selling yogurt, well, people buy your yogurt. If they like it, they'll come back the next day or next week, they'll buy it again. If they like it, they'll buy it again. So they consume it, they buy it again. They consume it, they buy it again. It's kind of like a subscription because they buy all the time, but they're not signed up. They just need to keep consuming. It's the same with content, with um, food, with even clothing. Like there's a lot of consumables. And one interesting fact about consumables is that, well, guess what? When you buy yogurt, is there one type of yogurt? No. There's like strawberry yogurt, vanilla yogurt, plain yogurt, chocolate yogurt, blah, 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 yogurt. Guess what? Because now you've got a, a whole array of products. So you're giving people an ability to try more, right? And when people want to try your strawberry, oh, the cherry flavor looks good too. The chocolate flavor looks great. Oh, and I love vanilla, and I love banana, and I love this and that, and blueberry. And so by the time you know it, they just bought like 10 yogurts. They can't even carry it, right? If they love your service. One way to make people love your service. It's not possible with every kind of business, but great support really wins people's hearts. They gain, that you gain their trust. They just get a ex good experience. They're emotionally positive about you. And that's where they're emotionally excited. They, they, they're helpful. They're not helpful. They're appreciative. That's also a good time where you can say, hey, you love us. Buy more of the stuff that you love. And so you can actually sell more through customer support. That's a sales tool if you're a smart business. And only, only, only happens with quality. People don't buy until they trust that they're getting a good or great deal. 
So only what they, they have to know, they have to believe they are getting a trustworthy, good, high quality product for the right price and then they buy. Before that, they don't buy. Remember back in the beginning of the video when I talked about affiliate marketing? Well, that's why it's hard to sell right away, right? Because people just don't buy right away from people they don't know, from businesses they don't know. They, there has to be a relationship there, some kind of a little uh, start. So let's talk about more service ideas that are that you can provide. So online, if you know have any skills, like school skills like math, English, or if you know a language, you can tutor, you can translate things, you can even do local things. So, lo so local services are very uh, common. Every business, every city has local businesses, and these are like not sexy, but you can make good money. I'll explain to you how with a simple example of dog walking, which you probably don't think it's a good business that like makes millions or whatever, but so there's a website called rover.com. It's a website where people look for dog walkers in their area. And it's fine. You can sign up there and you can get some clients. You'll make, at, in best case, hundreds of dollars or a few thousands of dollars. For some people, that's great. But it's not a business that will make you go like, boom, right? You're not a billionaire, a millionaire. But what if you create marketing channels? Let's say in every city, first in your city, in every neighborhood, when people are looking for dog walkers, they find your company, not you, your company, dog walking company, and you hire dog walkers. So now you're not dog walking. You started out as a dog walker, but you worked out, you kind of worked up as like you're getting more and more demand, more and more demand. And so you have to start, start hiring dog walkers, right? And from every dog walker, let's say you make $100 per day from each dog walker, and then you've got tens of dog walkers every day. And let's say you expand that, you dominated your city, right? You expand that to nearby towns. You expand that through your whole state. So if you execute well, remember that point earlier, if you execute to the 98th percentile or 99th percentile of quality, then you can make almost any business work, and if you don't, you'll make almost any business fail. Well, guess what? If you got dog walkers across the state, in every city of your state, walking dogs, and you're making $50 from each per day, $100 per each from each per day, you are wealthy just from dog walking. And this is a local business. One amazing thing about local businesses is they are really proven businesses. They just are in demand. That's why they have exist cleaning businesses, dog walking, a lot of there's a lot of traditional businesses, um, car detailing in demand. Be there's people want it, people need it, they search for it, they find it. And if you can provide the service and you can find a way to grow, that's fantastic. So don't shy away from local services. They are really good. And even though the internet is all has all the hype, this stuff is still really popular and still very lucrative. Uh, of course, there's local concierge type business where you actually travel to people's businesses or homes and help them, help them with things. So you actually can be mobile. You can travel to things, haircuts, local mobile nurses, mobile caregivers. There's a lot of services you can provide uh, where you travel to people's homes at, to, to create extra convenience for them. And uh, of course, that, that sets you apart locally. And it's an easy thing to do that you can get started. You don't need a place of business. Another thing you can do locally is buy and sell products, flipping products. For example, there's Facebook has kind of like a Craigslist equivalent, buy sell groups. And you literally can buy and sell things all day long. Buy on Fiverr, sell on, you know, some, like there's a big example. There's a guy I know of, forgot his name, but he, all he does, buys broken or takes for free, broken like washing machines, dryers, all these things. He learned how to fix them. From what I think from watching YouTube videos or something. He learned how to fix them over time. He stores them in their garage and he sells them online. So every one of them is like a hundred dollar, two hundred dollar profit, pure profit, because he takes the broken ones for free. Sometimes people even pay him to take it as a garbage, right? To haul the garbage. Then he hauls the garbage in his truck, he goes home, fixes it, sells it for a hundred or two hundred dollars, and if they pay him fifty to take it. $200 a sale, and if he's fast at selling it, at fixing it, you know, it's like a good business, all cash. So if you made 
that transaction, $250, all cash, I don't know if they reported or not, it's like $350 per day doing this on your own time. Not the worst thing in the world. Not gonna make you a millionaire unless you hire people to do this in, in, you know, in other neighborhoods and cities, but that's another story. But certainly it will give you the freedom and be to be your own boss and have your own business. And of course, there's a lot of local renting sites, Airbnb, get around where you can rent out your car. And there's a few more ideas for renting. There's Turo.com and there's Fat Llama where you can borrow almost anything. So cameras, chairs, right? So you can, you can rent out all kinds of stuff, which is a really cool site. So you can make money on Fat Llama really well. So now let's talk about some ideas that make your money work for you. We're, we're, we're out of the services. Now ideas that make your money work for you. Cryptocurrency investment, not really a business idea per se, but if you have some money, this field, very controversial field. I'm not gonna say it's bad, I'm not gonna say it's good. It's an option. Some people lost money with it. Some people made money with it. That's not a hint of what's gonna happen in the future, nobody knows, but it's an investment. Another thing is peer-to-peer -peer lending. Let's say if you want to make a loan to people, there's something like Prosper.com where you can give a loan to relatively trustworthy individuals. Again, there's risk. They might not pay you back, but generally they pay back. And you can make 5, 8, 10% on your loans that you give out. So something like Prosper.com, this peer-to-peer -peer lending, very popular now. There's also like real estate crowdfunding, you know, interesting for investments in real estate, um, AlphaFlow, try to research that. Also, there's, you know, if you want to avoid risk, there's long term and short term bonds, and of course, high interest CDs. People aren't excited about them, but they do give you at times one or two percent, which is at least no risk. Everything else, you know, you risk some failure. Here, no risk. So we just moved out of making money work for you. Let's talk about businesses. And by the way, notice that I didn't. Talk about stock investing. That is more mature than the crypto investing. So it's less returns, it's more risky. Crypto is uh, more volatile. The downturns, downturns are worse, upswings are better. Stock investing is almost too difficult now to legitimately pursue for, to, for retail investors. So I'm not even really looking at that so much. But uh, now that we're out of the making money work for you. Let's talk about businesses of tomorrow. And these are business of tomorrow, like it's technical. It's com more complex ideas, but they're rewarding. Not, it's a, there's a barrier to entry there. Uh, not everybody to, can get into it. So there's things like virtual reality, augmented reality. Uh, there's things like drones and drone photography and other things, drone delivery, other things you can. So you need a lot of programming skills. If you can learn programming, like this skill will never go bad, at least for the foreseeable future. There's so many things to work on and really futuristic kind of businesses that not a lot of people will compete with you on. Also 3D printing. One thing I love about 3D printing is it makes physical things. Think back to our earlier examples, the very early ones. They, uh, we were talking about selling on Amazon, 3D printing. You can just hire somebody to 3D print stuff for you all day, all kinds of designs, and you sell that on Amazon. Like homemade, minimal, If even if you do it, if you don't hire someone, it's homemade, minimal investment. You just have to ha buy a 3D printer. They're getting cheaper and better. So just make products on your own at home, sell it on Amazon, sell it on Etsy, sell it everywhere, sell it through your own site. So. It's not a bad idea. Um, and of course, there's 3D printer design. There's a lot of careers and job and businesses in 3D printing. It's a fantastic new field. So it's a way to get products made for you on your own. So you don't have to, it's another way to create products on your own. So you don't have to depend on other people. And of course, AI and artificial intelligence is also a field of tomorrow. Again, they require technical ability, learning. It's not for everybody, but if you can get into it, if you can invest the time into it, not easy, but really worthwhile because tomorrow they will reward you. I'll give you an example. I got into mobile apps relatively early and oh boy, was that I uh, door opening for me. Because everyone was like, 
wow, you have an app, right? Like nobody cares that much today about apps. They're kind of cool, but nah, not that much. But, uh, but back in the day when they were first starting out, everybody was like, ooh, app, how do you make money? How does this, how does that? And I got a lot of publicity. I got into like pub, uh, magazines, publications, podcasts, radio shows, just because I was like, I had this app angle and people wanted to know. So they wanted to interview me. So I actually built up a lot of my self-branded business and a lot of my early successes were on top of that publicity, which was on top of the apps, which was on top of the, the whole point of it was that it was the, it, at that time, it was the business of tomorrow. Now it's kind of the business of today and yesterday and maybe tomorrow. It's not exciting. But back then, when it was exciting, when I was early in it, it was great. Now, one caveat, if you get in it early and really invest into a business that has hype about tomorrow, often it doesn't pan out. Like, you know, remember the Google Glasses? People thought, oh my God, this is a technology of tomorrow, and now it's not so popular or dead. So some things don't pan out, and there's risk there. Whenever you're innovating, whenever you're leading the pack, there's risk. So if you don't like risk, do business of today. If you like risks and big and big potentials, try the business of tomorrow. And uh, of course, there's new startup ideas, the new Ubers, right? And the mobile apps, they're still in the realm of new business ideas. Uber, kind of, okay, fine, a little older now, but there's all kinds of cool app ideas that are coming up. Uh, one student in my mobile app course, like literally, created like message me yesterday was like to tell me there's an app that makes you happy like like literally uh, sci scientifically based proven techniques to make people happy just with an app so it's like there's all new ideas for apps still so it is part you know there's a lot of startups with apps still but let me tell you a little bit about how I kind of break down business ideas there's commoditized ideas commoditized is something we all know it's familiar cleaning business taxi driving very easy. We know them. No brainer. Then there's innovative ideas. That was Uber. That was Airbnb when it was new. Okay. And then there's the hybrids. Com combining them. So Uber is basically, you took an old concept, taxis, and you applied a new and existing technology, mobile app with geolocation. Okay. And then you combine them and you made this multi-billion dollar thing. Okay, so one way to get new business ideas, is, and I teach much more on this in my courses well, on pl planning a business, on starting a business. I teach a lot on, especially the course on starting a business, I teach a lot, on how, how, a lot about how to come up with unique business ideas, even in industries that are like not so, seem like not so, they don't have room to innovate, but you can, you, there's always room ways to be unique and I'll actually actually show how to systematically combine ideas to consistently find new types of business ideas. So there should be by the end of this by the end of those courses you should have no shortage of business ideas. Business ideas are not the hard part. So now you kind of know a lot about a lot of different ideas you can do today and it should give you a really good overarching view of what you can get into. Now, let me give you a few honorable mentions of things that I wanted to make sure that I included. Because, first of all, events and workshops. This doesn't seem like a sexy business at all, but it's totally lucrative. Maybe not going to make you a millionaire, but it's going to make you... It's not a lot of... Proportionally and relatively, it's not a lot of work for the potential. If you put on a regular event or a regular workshop, eventually... The bigger your attendance, you can start charging people, and there's a lot of ways to monetize it even without charging people. And the great thing is that once you figure out how to get the events right and how to populate them, you can keep running them and running them and running them, and they become more successful and less work over time. And you can keep doing these events, and it's very good for upselling your company services, your building up your personal brand getting clients to buy something else, maybe your digital products, who knows. But these events and workshops, the strong thing about them is they do position you as a thought leader there, a little bit of an influencer, and everybody comes to you, you're the center of it, and you build these amazing business relationships. Because people appreciate you right away. You provided a good event for them to come to, right? So they want to network with you, and you can sell to them, you can build business relationships. It's actually pretty good. Like I, I used to put on events 
and I'm really excited about that business. Now, there's other things you can do that are popular today, organizing mastermind groups and providing coaching services like business coaching, life coaching. Life coaching gets kind of a bad rap and maybe deservedly so to a point, but generally it coaching and and group coaching, which is mastermind groups, is a really popular concept today. And if you have any skill, I'm sure that other people would love to learn that skill. So you can kind of do that business. It's part of it's part of having it's under the umbrella of having a self branded business anyway. And one the last thing I want to say is just wait less and do more. Talk less about how excited and passionate you are. Just talk a little bit about that. Daydream a little bit about that. But without doing, you're kind of just wasting your own and people's time. Don't do it. Don't be a talker. Be a doer. But don't only be a doer. Is that stupid? Plan. Get feedback. Then do. But don't just talk and plan and talk and plan and talk and plan. If you do that, smack. Don't do it. And then, last thing, kind of a bonus. There's an interesting concept that I learned early on and it really stuck with me and it, I credit it for a lot of my own success. And it's the concept of working on the business, not in the business. What does that even mean? Well, when you're working in the business, you are maybe writing the blog post, you may be making your YouTube videos, you may be selling to clients, you're in the business, you're working to make the business grow, okay, in it. When you're in it, you're doing the busy work. You cannot take a step back and evaluate, what am I doing wrong, how can I improve things? So give yourself 10% of your time or 20% of your time, something, but some part of your time to work on the business. Now, what is working on the business? Well, let's say you're writing blog posts or the same example of YouTube videos. I'm only using that because they are so easy to for everybody to understand. Well, working in it is, let's say, filming the video. Working on it is buying better equipment, which gives you better video, better audio, right? It makes the videos better. Getting coaching on your presentation makes the videos better. So it's something that makes the end result better, improving the product, not making the product, but improving your process and educating yourself so that the, the work you do when you do the work, when you're in the business, you do better work. And guess what happens with better work? Clients buy from you more. They love your business more. And they stick around. You can sell more to them. All those good things, they recommend you more. All those good things happen through quality. And the quality comes from working on the business, not in it. So a lot of success comes really from working on the business, not the busy work making not so great stuff when you're in it, okay? So just make sure you have that balance. And well, we're done with our video, we're done with our ideas. Thank you for watching. I know it's been a long video. I hope it's been productive. I tried to give you a lot in this video. I gave you business fundamentals. I gave you deeper business fundamentals. I gave you 40 different ideas. And I would love it if you can check out my courses and my books. I'll link to all of it below. They are truly helpful. I've helped over a thousand entrepreneurs and I've created over a hundred courses. I've written 20 books. I've been around and I've seen everything. And you can see that I know a little bit of, or sometimes a lot, about almost everything that's going on online in online business. And I'm not only theoretical, I'm hands on because a lot of these things. I'm doing myself. I've got physical products. I've got digital products. I'm a coach. And I've got seven-figure clients and six-figure clients as a coach, right? So I've been there. I do it every day myself. I help people just like you. And so the advice I give is legitimate. I don't give like shortcut, get-rich-quick schemes. It's all solid fundamentals that set you up for long-term success. And that's what I give you in the courses. I strive for quality. And I strive to really be helpful to you. And that's why the courses are good. I keep improving them. I keep working not just in them, making them better. I keep working on them. Always trying to film better, be more insightful, present better. Hopefully that can be seen in this video. And the video came out okay and you liked it. If you did, comment. Give a thumbs up or tell me, like, is there some business idea that you liked or some business ideas that you thought were kind of dumb? 
or ones that you've already tried, what succeeded for you. I'd love to hear actually what's working for you, what is working really well. So with that, thanks for watching and see you in my next video.